Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And my special guest today is Vince Wade from Pinehurst Coins. How are you doing, Vince? Good to see you again. I'm doing great, Patriotic Stacker. Uh, happy to be here again. Uh, looking forward to uh, uh, another entertaining interview, as usual. So I appreciate you bringing us back. So. It, it, I don't know if you caught it yet, but do you see the background of what, I don't know if you can see the, the layout of the screen. Yes, I, I have your, the Pinehurst logo in the back. <laughs> yeah, I truly appreciate that. So. Get, from, get some advertising out there. Yeah. So uh, um, how's business since our last interview? Uh, business has been brisk. I mean, I, I can't complain. Things things are going in, a, in an upward trend, so that's a positive thing. Uh, I think the market has really lent itself to allowing the premiums to come back to so-called normal, whatever normal is. Uh, I, I love the fact that Silver Eagles are really becoming affordable again and, and the spreads are coming more in line to what we're used to seeing, uh, which is pretty atypical for this time of the year because you know the new ones are getting ready to come out. So we'll, we'll have to wait to see what happens when the 2024s drop. Uh, how many of the mint has decided to release in the in the first release of those, and uh, we'll see how that affects the price. And I know the question is going to be, what are they going to release? I don't know, so don't ask that one yet. <laughs> so, so I noticed with the Eagles, they usually release around January, February of the, the new year. Like Maples, they're usually out like. Which is weird because they're not out yet. Usually they're out by like October, November, like the Britannias. Correct, they yes. Of, they kind of come out the same time. But the Maples, there's been a delay. There's no news on the new Maple. You heard anything about the Maple? I, I have not heard anything about the Maple other than it's going to be about another week or so. Uh, I don't know the reasons for the delay. The Silver Eagle is typically the first to second week of January is when they start coming live. Uh, we try to get them all shipped by the third week of January. Well, just know that when the 2024 Eagles come out, I'm, I'm going to buy them from you. So. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. So, of course. Uh, um, so that leads me to my second question. Now, since the recent, when, we, when I did the last interview with you, the premium started dropping on Eagles. Um, but now they've, you know, they've, it pretty much stayed, you know, in that relatively four to five dollars over spot range. Um, have you seen a lot of stackers and collectors go back to the American Silver Eagle? Yeah, we've definitely seen an uptick in the purchasing of this the Silver Eagles. The premium has really stabilized on the wholesale side. Uh, I really can't imagine it going down much more. I mean, there is some. There is some potential for it to, to go down, maybe another 25 cents or so, but truly getting much lower than that, I, I just don't see that in the in the near term. Uh, the, the, the spread to me is a lot more in line with what we've seen in the past. And when I you know, talk about a spread, I mean the difference between the buy and the sell. So you know, at those astronomical premiums that were out there, the spread was just – ridiculous you know the sell was like 12 13 bucks over and the buy was like six bucks now we're we're a lot closer to the buy and the sell are a lot closer to each other. yeah I, I remember that i remember offloading a few tubes of eagles during that time hey. um my local coin shop offered me like 12 13 dollars over yeah and i, I mean, mean our advice on that was why would you not convert the the high premium item for the lower premium item and then you can convert back later when the premiums come down i mean it was like an extra bonus if you had live stock so i think you, you took advantage of a good situation there. It, exactly and that's what i did and i think i came out with like an extra 20 ounces of silver so i got the money back plus a 20 ounce bar i, right. I bought two 10 ounce bars and it ended up you know that was like a you know it was you know, it's, it was just a common sense move, you know, it made sense to me. And now with the premiums being down, and granted, they're not down to where they were when I first started stacking. I remember paying, you know, two and change, $3 over spot for Eagles. But I just, 
you know, I, I did a two month challenge and I stacked a, another monster box of Eagles and the average price is about four to five dollars over spot. So, you know, and if it jumps back up to 10, 15 over, which is possible, I can sell them, do the same thing. Yeah, the odds of it going back to what, what you started at is, you know, that's below the, 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 the mid cost. So, I mean, we're, we're not going to get there. So, <laughs> it's not, well, it's not going to happen. Good too. That's good, too. So I can continue the buying. <laughs> right. okay. Anything under three bucks is pretty amazing. So uh, we're, we're, we're offering more than that right now. So, uh, for, for brand new eagles. Yeah, absolutely. No, um, I, matter of fact, I just bought a few tubes off of your guys' eBay store. Oh, um, right. You know, the last, I emailed Bella just letting her know that, you know, I've made a few purchases and, you know, she had it out the next day. You know, you guys are great. Your customer service is amazing. Quick shipping. I, that's why I love dealing with you guys and I like to have you on the show. Um, but they were cheap. I think I paid uh, four seventy over spot, maybe five dollars at most. Yeah, it that, wasn't that, bad. Yeah, that's that's a pretty good price. You know, I want to take a moment to discuss something that's always come up here at Pinehurst. It's a question we get all the time, when, because we do so. Um, we're the largest submitter of modern coins into the third party grading services, right? And everybody has this belief that we pre-screen coins before we send them to the grading service. We, we, we don't do that. They, the, the tubes are, are sealed, you know? So they, they, you get them sealed, they're, they're sealed, and it's just not cost effective for us to look through the coins to try to find the better grades. That's what the grading service does. We send it to them in seal boxes. They, they grade them and they grade well. But there's no way to repackage them and reseal them and get them to the client base. So we we have other means of uh, selling the what we call the rejects, the ones that don't make the grade. So, and the, and it will say that if we ever decide to sell them in that manner, it would say rejects or secondary market or something like that. It will not be put as brand new steel. So I just want to stop that rumor mill. I can vouch for that because every tube of eagle I bought off you guys, this U.S. mint seal is Correct. sealed. There's no cuts. There's no rips. I mean, and we do a good job of reinforcing that seal so it doesn't pop open and shipping it also. Yeah, you know, because you guys put the foam up top and then you put the tape over that foam so you don't even when because a lot of people like me like to keep my eagle sealed. Right. So. When you take that, most companies, when they put that tape over it, they'll put it over the seal. So when you open it up, you'll rip that seal off and it just it makes it look ugly. You guys put even make the extra step by putting the foam and taping over it the opposite way the seal right. is. So when you take that off, you still got a sealed tube and you're not peeling the seal off. So, yeah, they're straight out of the monster box. Correct. Yeah. So uh, as of recently... What's been the better uh, buys uh, for stackers on your site? What have you been selling more? What's bars, rounds? It's it's actually been the, the Legendary Warrior series has been incredibly good for us. I mean, it, and, and it's not about the profitability. It's about how much penetration we're getting in the marketplace. I mean, the, the round is very popular. The designs have been very well received. It's just been an, an overall good thing. And I, I'm actually very proud of that. That that whole program, the Legendary Warriors, was my idea. They're not my designs. I actually have an artist that, that, that does them for me. So, uh, and and I'm, I'm just really proud of, of that whole series and I'm looking forward to see how it turns out in the end. So that, oh, that's wow. a, a great product line for us. And people, it's been well received, so. Now, I'm not a big round stacker. Like a lot of my followers know that I'm not big into rounds, but everyone was telling me on our last interview, oh, I love the Legendary Warrior series. I'm right. fine. I can only buy them from Pinehurst. I love them. They, they do so beautiful work on them. They're just an amazing round. And I started looking at them, and, you know, they are. The design, the detail for a generic round, they are beautiful. 
and they're priced right. I mean, they're very standard Buffalo around. And, and the beautiful thing is, too, we opened it up on the wholesale side. So pretty much every major retailer of bullion is, is actually uh, carrying the item. Now. So they can be bought in a lot of different places. So it's not, we, we did not keep it exclusive for Pinehurst coins. Uh, we're not really like an exclusive type of company. When we come up with a good idea. We, we want that idea out there. We're not trying to afford anything. That's awesome. You know, that's another good thing that you guys do. Um, you give the option to, if you invent a coin or you make it a design of coin, you, you know, let other wholesalers be able to have the chance to buy it. Um, smaller wholesales to bigger wholesales. Um, that's awesome because you have a lot of dealers that kind of corner that market and they'll only keep that coin to one dealer so they can pretty much name their price. Right. And that's, I mean, nothing against their business model. I mean, there's a lot of things that, that are exclusive to Pinehurst that we have the rights to. And I don't want to go through that, but uh, we, we don't retain those rights. We actually open, we open it to the open market. We believe in the open market. There's even, even some categories from the grading services that are exclusive to Pinehurst, but we allow all the dealers to use them and, and it makes for a fair price. I mean, if if you if you have it's proprietary to you, then you can just name the price, and that's not what this is about. I mean, the whole premise of this company is to get a fair price to the end user, and I believe that's why we've been successful. Now, don't get me wrong; we're in the business of making money, so we just want to it, we want to do it in the most ethical way possible. Absolutely, no. We you know we all start you know a business to make money, you know. If, right. we, if we lose, we're not going to get too far. <laughs> so, no. you, know, you know, my father used to tell, tell me, you know, never never knock another person's hustle. That's and exactly that right. right. You know? So we respect um, so, uh, the players and we love uh, competing with them. So. Yeah, absolutely. So speaking about, you know, the legendary Warrior Series and, you know, uh, you know, a beautiful design silver, most, you know, nice design silver is considered premium silver right how do you feel about premium silver and gold should stack or stack high premium silver i i don't think that a stacker should should stack high premium silver i mean i think that's why the legendary warrior has been popular with the stacker because it's priced as a bullion item i mean we could have done we could have done uh, limited runs of them and tried to make them a high premium item. That's not what the intent. The intent of the Legendary Warrior series was to give something that we that a stacker or, or a silver collector would enjoy but doesn't have to pay a high premium for it, make it a little bit more interesting. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not knocking high premium silver. What, I, what I'm saying is each their own. You know, if you're a collector of certain designs and the limited edition aspect, and that's your driving force, then absolutely it's good for you. But if you're just trying to get maximize your silver position, that's probably not a product for you. So I agree. I agree. Now, being with premium silver, how about vintage silver? Vintage silver and gold, angle hearts, Johnson Matthew, Amart. What do you think of that stuff? Uh, again, that's more of a collectible item. So, you know, some of the old Eagle Hard bars, you know, the four ounces, the odd sizes, they go for a tremendous premium. And there's a collecting base for it, a collector's base for it. So uh, they go up in value because the following seems to be growing. But again, it's, it's predicated on what you're into. If you're into collecting and trying to uh, really build a collection of Inglehar bars, then it's for you. But for me, I, I would. I, it's not. It's not my cup of tea. So I don't care if it's a, a an old Inglehar bar or a brand new four ounce bar. I want it for the cheapest price I could possibly get it for because I'm betting that silver goes up in value over time. And you're, and if you're paying a higher premium for the silver, an astronomically high premium is what I'll say, that's less silver in your bank. So, uh, and there's, again, nothing wrong with it if your standpoint is you're, you're hoping that the collectability side goes up in value. 
but a, a, a true stacker for me is someone that believes silver is undervalued. So you're taking some bullets out of your your your, your gun there if you're spending that that on uh, that ammunition on premium instead of on silver. And we could go back in time and, and look at these high premium items being sold when silver was at an elevated rate. People weren't getting that premium back out. So, you know, it, 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 at that point when silver skyrockets and you're looking to liquidate, premiums typically come down. So, You know, I agree with you. You know, there's a lot of people in the community that are, they call themselves stack collectors. You know, sure. like hack stacker, hack collector. Yeah. Um, and then you got, you know, your diehard stackers that just 100% stack. They don't care what it is as long as it's cheap. Right. Um, I don't, I don't I disagree can... with anything at all when it comes to that. If, if you love collecting and, and you have the bug to collect and, and you know, mm -hmm. what you like, it's all for you then. I mean, you, you'll know it better than I know it. You should know your own market. And be able to, to to take advantage of of the market based upon your knowledge. But when we're when I like to speak more to the just traditional stacking and and just on the silver value itself. I just don't want to steer somebody in the wrong direction and say, yeah, buy the collectible coins because of X, Y, and Z. Because it's you know the X, Y, and Z would always be because it's more beneficial to buy those coins for you to buy the collectible because we make more margin. You know I mean, and I don't think that's a, a, a good statement. So uh, buy what you love and 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 collect what you love. So. Exactly, you know, and that's me. I'm I consider myself ninety five percent you know diehard stacker. Right. Now I'm a picky stacker. I like what I like. I right. stack usually 10 ounce bars, kilo silver bars, one ounce silver coins, you know, like eagles, maples. You know, yeah. I love junk silver, 90%. Um, and then for gold, I like to stick to the one ounce. I'll buy fractional here and there, but I like right. to try to get as cheap as I possibly can. But there is part of me where, you know, I like vintage silver. I like Angle Heart bars. I like Johnson Matthew and Amark. Right. But. I like to get those 10 ounce bars as even those as cheap as I possibly can because, you know, I mean, you see some of these angle hearts and they're like 400 bucks, $500. Well, again, you, you've hit it right on, you hit the nail right on the head. When you said, I like those, if you yeah. like them, buy them. But what I'm yeah. not going to do is give somebody the advice to buy it because it's, it, it's a good idea. It's not, it's not, it's like telling somebody that, you know, likes, likes coffee just they just like it to buy the most expensive coffee there is out there if they don't appreciate that coffee you know what i mean so and and i'm not going to tell somebody that just likes silver to buy the most expensive silver if they don't appreciate the collectible aspect of that silver that's all so exactly now speaking of graded coins that we talked about earlier What's your take on numismatic coins? Are they a good investment? Because, you know, there's some of those coins. I mean, I've, I've heard stories of people buying them and just, you know, them going up in value. Like, for example, the, the Morgan dollar. Right. Not too long ago, I remember buying Carson City Morgan dollars in the GSA for 100 bucks, $120. Right. And now, I mean, the, bare, the cheapest one is like 300 in a GSA. And that's the common year. But, you know, just within the recent years, I've seen an explosion in this slab, more than dollar, you know, PCGS, NGC. Sure. Um, and, but, you know, yeah, like, what do, you, what do you think on that? Do you think it's a good investment? So for, for me, it's absolutely a good investment, right? But I'm very well educated in the field, right? And education is key when it comes to numismatic items. You have, to, you have to know a lot about the items. And unfortunately, there are people out there that are going to tell you this is a good deal, that's a good deal, and blah, blah, blah. And you really need to educate yourself and figure out what the market trends are, what's typically gone up. You know, I mean, just on the common day GSAs that you spoke about, I remember them at 110 bucks a piece. I mean, yeah. it, 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 you know, but 
they're not making more of those and affecting uh, community is growing. So these are all positive things. But again, you, you, you have to deal with a dealer that is, you know, very, very well known, has a great reputation, preferably a PNG dealer, somebody that's being held to a higher standard and is marketing the stuff in an appropriate manner. So what, what I don't like is when someone says, this is a great investment, buy it, and this is the reasons why. And, you know, I don't have a crystal ball. So I can't tell you what's going to go up in value t- tomorrow. Uh, if I knew that, I, I probably wouldn't be on this interview. I'd probably be at my private island somewhere. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, 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 it's just all marketing. And, 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 and don't get me wrong, there's, there's great companies out there and there's bad companies out there and everything in between. And, and that's why I say education is key. You know, you, you have to really learn about the stuff that you're going to buy. You, you just can't take somebody's word for it. Exactly. You know, you gotta, it's important to have a trusted dealer, um, even if your local coin shop. It's important to be have a trusted one. Because I walked in local coin shops, and there were some of them that were just, you know, they'll pull something over your eyes and, you know, try to sell you, you know, junk. Um, you yeah. know, so, you know, it's important to have relationships, do the research, especially if you want to get into collecting. I've seen a lot of buddies of mine just go in, you know, with that FOMO. And they're buying Morgan dollars that, you know, they read somewhere that they're worth $500. But in reality, that grade and that shape of coin was, you know, it's a call. Only, you know, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, uh, there's a lot of people that it's, I like numismatics too. That's my 5% of me that does collection. I love, I'm a sucker for toned Morgan dollars. I'm a yeah, sucker. There's, there's no doubt in this world that collecting rare coins can be profitable, right? But you have to be knowledgeable. So, I mean, when we look at true key date rarities, they're, you know, they're achieving the, the highest auction prices that they've ever achieved in history. I mean, it, it, but again, you have to be educated in this process. You can't go into a, a local coin shop or go online somewhere and, and think the deal is uh, too good be true because it is too good to be true you're not going to buy a 500 dollars coin for 25 bucks exactly Something's not right so again you need to educate yourself and and start off slow that's always been that's always going to be my advice start off slow and and love what you collect and truly invest some time to learn about it right nothing in this world is free exactly um now on I've noticed in the community, Morgan Silver Dollar, the great, you know, the graded Morgan Silver Dollars, NDC, PCGS, um, it's been very popular in our community. What, oh, really? coin do you, what coin do you see that's picking up? Like what graded series of coins do you see that's really picking up in popularity? You know, is it the Walker Half Dollar? Is it, you know, the, the Seated Liberties? Is, what have you noticed? Uh, is it Stolen Morgans? It's, it's actually, there's been a resurgence in the collecting of Morgans just because of all the modern Morgans that are coming out. So, in, you know, when the, when the Mint released the new Morgan and Peace Dollars, we've seen a, a very big surge on the older one, right? And, and just common dates, common dates, common grade, like 63, 64s, the prices are going up and they're very affordable. So. That's a good entry point with not a lot of risk. Yeah, awesome. Um, this is a question in, uh, from one of my community members. Uh, a lot of stackers love to play the GSR. What is a good GSR to trade silver for gold? Does it work? Okay, GSR, sure. Uh, you know, I think GSR is, is something that everybody speaks about a lot. Uh, for me, it's just valuation, right? So, uh, off the top of my head, GSR is probably, probably low eighties right now, 80, 81, 83, somewhere around there. Uh, but it's really, which one do you think has the most, you know, upside to it? Right. So, and, and that's really what GSR is, right. Is, is saying like, 
83 or 80, 82 ounces of silver right now is what you could get from an ounce of gold, right? And if if we go back all the way in history and we look at when when the governments were were you know on the gold standard, silver standard, you're gonna look at a GSR probably around 15, somewhere around there, and 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 now we're seeing it get higher and higher and higher. So that's telling you that gold's at an all-time high and silver's not. So some people believe it's beneficial to liquidate the gold and buy the silver. I don't disagree with that. Uh, it's, 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 I believe that silver has more upside than gold on a personal side. That's not a, a Pinehurst Coins piece of advice. That's a piece of advice for me personally. Uh, but that's just my belief. I, I, there's there's really no right answer. I mean, I think anything that you could do to hedge your bets is always a positive thing. So if you say to yourself, hey, when a GSR crosses 80, I'm going to convert gold to silver. And when a GSR goes down to like 50, I'm going to do the opposite. I don't, I don't see that as being a bad thing. So I'm sorry I can't give you a, an absolute answer there. So. No, you know, it, it's a tricky question, you know what I mean? Um, that whole GSR, I, I never really understood it 100%, you know? Um, I've never really played the GSR. Okay. I kind of just, just buy what I see as good. I mean, if I feel that silver has the better premium that, that week or that month, um, and I go towards silver. Um, right. If I see gold better, I go to gold. I usually never trade my metals that much. When I have them, I keep them. And right. if I just want more, I buy. I just buy and buy and buy. Um, so right. I, really don't, I don't really play the GSR, but there's going to come a time where I'm going to need to because, let's be honest, stacking a lot of silver, it takes up a lot of space. And well, it's hard. Well, let, Guys let's can move it all. That's, that's exactly right. So but, but let's look at it. I mean, GSR isn't necessarily meaning tr trade gold for silver or trade silver for gold, but it, it is a good indicator of which one's overvalued and which one's undervalued to tell you which one's important. As I, I think what most people use to do. Hmm. Interesting. Right. I mean, so if one ounce of gold is equivalent to right now 83 ounces of silver, that's a, that's a higher GSR. You know, so maybe silver, silver is a better bet than gold, if that's what you believe in. And then, if if the silver value, uh, the GSR is fifty, that means you only get fifty ounces of silver for every ounce of gold you buy. Maybe gold's a better. Bet. I don't know. Exactly. But in the beginning, the GSR was fifteen. So, you know, when gold was twenty bucks an ounce. The GSR was 15 ounces to silver, right? So oh, it's, a lot, it's a lot different today, right? A lot, a lot's changed. <laughs> now, now, this is a tricky question. Okay. One, one of the last questions I have here. Taxes on metals. Now, every state's different. It is. I mean, you guys, for me, when I buy from you guys, I have to pay over $1,000. So for me, stacking metals is expensive because every time I buy, it's a thousand dollars or more. That's the threshold in New York. But I heard there are certain benefits when it comes to certain metals with taxes. There um, is. Can you explain? You know, just yeah, a little bit about. I can touch on it, but again, each state is different. So let me talk about the state of North Carolina first. Is my nurses in North Carolina, right? So. Uh, when I first started this business, there was sales tax on precious metals. And believe it or not, when people would call up or come into the shop and ask to buy precious metals, there was a few pieces here and there we wouldn't have a discussion about. It. But when they were talking about taking a large position, we would be honest with them and say, you know, this is before uh, weight fair and all that type of stuff. So we would say you're probably better off going online and purchasing it, purchasing it from a larger uh, online bullion uh, dealer at the time because you won't have to pledge the sales tax. Now, the state of North Carolina during that was like 6.75%. I don't believe in having to pay tax to trade one piece of currency 
for another form of growth. Oh, yeah. That, that was the case. But I also put my money where my mouth was. And, you know, a few of us got together and hired a lobbyist. And we lobbied the state of North Carolina and we got that, we got that sales tax appeal. So you no longer have to pay sales tax on precious metals in North Carolina. Then we fast forward to the whole Wayfair uh, lawsuit where states were suing the merchants for not collecting the sales tax for each individual state. And that's why we run into the, 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 the side of things now that, you know, eBay and all the different websites and things like that have to collect sales tax for each individual state. So there are, there are lobbyists out there that are continuing to fight to remove the sales tax on precious metals on every state. And, and the list is getting longer and longer. So uh, hopefully your state will be one of them soon. So be I'm, I'm hoping. I'm, ho I'm hoping. I mean, you know, it gets expensive. But listen, it's good in a way because every time I buy, it's a lot of stuff because right. I got it. I got to meet that threshold, but there's some weeks that, well, Hey, you know, I only got five, $600 to spend this week, you know? So I gotta, I gotta pay taxes on that. So, you know, it, it sucks sometimes, but you know, it, it does, but maybe they've saved you some money. Maybe, maybe you did a lot more saving, you got more savings by uh, waiting to buy at a larger increment and get a lower price. point. Oh, yeah. They help you stack quicker. There you they go. Have, they grew my stack quicker. <laughs> there you go. Trying to look like it, at it from a positive side because there's really nothing that could be done but get a lobbyist to fight the good fight. So, but you know what? States are dropping the tax. Um, yes. I remember two years ago, I went to a buddy a coin shop of mine, one of my favorite local coin shops. Um, just a small business out of Virginia Beach. Okay. And I remember I bought uh, something and it was $500 tax, you know, it was $500 as a threshold. And then the next year it came down, Virginia got rid of it. So now Virginia is one of those states that they do not charge taxes. Yeah. But um, hopefully New York goes that route. Um, I don't know. But for anyone that's in this listening right now to this interview, that's from North Carolina. You can thanks to Vince Wade and his buddies. For not paying taxes on metals in North Carolina. <laughs> yeah. There was a Charlotte dealer that really pushed that agenda and was the lead on that, and we helped him support that. So we're, we're glad we're glad we we're glad it went through, and I hope it happens to every state. Uh, just keep in mind that coin dealers don't make money off sales tax. We collect it and turn it over to the state. So it's a hindrance to us. It costs us money to do it. It costs everybody. Yeah. Uh, and and it's it's just not good for, for business. Exactly. So and I got the final question for you here today, Vince. Okay. And uh, let's talk about Pinehurst. What's new for Pinehurst? I heard there's a little uh, a cool new thing that you guys are doing on eBay, and I'm sure everyone would love to hear this. So uh, yeah. So we we partnered up with eBay. They have a little thing called uh, eBay Live, right? So we do live shows pretty much every every weekday, so Monday through Friday, and 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 where they're auctioning off items, talking about the items. It's a it's a it's a good comical show to watch, right? But I every Tuesday and Thursday we do dealer pricing shows, and it typically lasts I don't know thirty to sixty minutes long. And what it is is larger lots of silver and gold. And the beauty of it is, is the pricing is very low. So let's say that we're doing like one ounce rounds at plus 80 cents or plus a buck. You That price is the credit card price. Though. So you could use your credit card. Purchase, let's, let's just keep the math simple and say it's 25 bucks all in per ounce. You're going to get uh, you know a two percent cash back. That's a fifty cents fifty cent discount per ounce that you're going to get back from your credit card company. If it's one percent cash back, that's twenty five cents. So I think it's a great opportunity to buy silver at the, the lowest possible premium. I mean, I, I would say that if you take in the the, the cash back scenario, you're not going to find a cheaper uh, price point anywhere. Uh, it's, it's been a, a, a very good promotional thing that we're able to do with eBay. 
I don't know how long it's going to last. So next next Tuesday could be the last show, and don't get mad at me if it is because I'm not telling you it's going on forever. I'm just telling you it's available right now. And typically the lots are uh, 100 ounces of silver or 5 or 10 ounces of gold. So that they are larger lots. But again, there's a there's it, it's based upon you know whatever your credit card offers cash back wise. So that's awesome. So pretty much, if you have a good credit card, you can use that credit card, and it's better than paying cash or it paying is. a check or wire. You're getting that. You're getting the rewards, miles, cash back, whatever your card offers. Correct. Um, and you don't have to wait a week for the process or two weeks. You know, it probably ships out in two or three days. I mean, that's awesome. You know, believe it or not, I'm a... Some of these deals are actually cheaper on eBay Live with the use of a credit card than on our own website with the use of a wire. So yeah. again, it is a great promotion that's going on. Check it out and, and, and see if you can find something. That's a, that's a great opportunity. And I appreciate sharing with us. Um, yes. Guys, definitely take advantage of that. Um, Go to Pinehurst website. Go go to their eBay store. Um, you guys also have like a little brick and mortar shop, right? A local coin yeah, shop where you can walk in, talk to someone. Yep, we yeah. actually have a, a a fairly large fulfillment uh, fulfillment uh, facility in Pinehurst, and we do allow the public to come in. Uh, we have private transaction rooms, and, and you could ask to look at different products, and we'll be more than happy to have a conversation. Oh, and I just want to shout out one thing that you guys also have in stock. Now, these are one of my favorite Kilo Silver bars, and they're very hard to find. And they're pretty, you know, if you look anywhere else on other people selling them on eBay, other dealers selling them, these bars sell for about twelve to $1,400. Well, they have the new RCM Kilo Silver bars in stock, and they're cheap. So oh, wow. guys like RCM bars, Kilo bars like me, they uh, Pinehurst has them on their eBay store. I think they also have it on their website. And uh, just a beautiful, solid RCM Kilo Silver bar. Great. Yeah. I want, I, I, You're educating me about my own company now. I love yeah, it. Yeah. I know, it's awesome. It's I, I've been searching for that bar for so long, right? Good. And uh the Britannia one, I, I, the Britannia bars, I love. But yeah, the premium is quite high on uh, on those. So I don't. Is that the one you're talking about, the Britannia Kilo? Or? This, is, this is the R, the Royal Canadian Mint Kilo. Okay. Yeah, okay. I do R love the Britannia bars too. The Britannia ten ounce bars, I love their, you know, the hundred ounce that design. Yeah. Um, but that's another thing I've noticed with the premiums on the RCM and the Britannias have dropped a lot too the last yep. four it's, months. It's all coming back to reality, right? So that's that's the beauty of it, and, and and that's why we have to stay disciplined when the premiums are skyrocketing. We got to find the we got to find the deals and figure out what's the best opportunity to still get our dollars into to the items that we love. But right? we 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 can't just be steadfast on one particular product. Say, I only buy Silver Eagles. I mean, you, you, you got to be able to pivot, you know, you know, if the premiums on silver eagles are high. Maybe you should talk, talk to your local coin dealer and see if you could uh, trade out those eagles for more ounces of silver. And then when it gets right, trade back. You know, I'm sure I'm sure if you if you're uh, really you know spending the time to educate yourself, you, it's going to be profitable. So I've heard a lot of stories of people trading in silver eagles that all bucks over and now they're 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 exchanging them back for five dollars over so that's a seven dollar profit so. oh i mean it's it's a win-win if you play it smart i mean it's great things can happen right but um vince again i appreciate you for coming on uh it means a lot and uh we got a schedule for our next one you know i'd like to have hey, you on hey, for the yeah. next one and Absolutely. uh Anything else you want to leave with us? Any 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 news with Pine? Any thing new with Pinehurst? Yeah, appreciate you guys spending some time with me, and uh, I, I thoroughly enjoy it. I appreciate it. And guys, once again, check out Pinehurst eBay store, their website, and if you want to go check out their store uh, in Pinehurst, North Carolina, um, great place, good customer service. 
great team, a great president right here. And uh, thanks again, Vince. All right. Thank you, Patriotic Stacker. I really enjoyed it. Take care now. I'll see you later. Take care.